Hallelujah. Praise God. We just thank God for today. Father God, we pray you might speak. I might be silent. Live in God. Have your word. Have your way. We pray, O oh God, that a life might be touched, a soul might be saved. In the name and by the precious blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Today, topic is inner holiness versus outer holiness. Inner faith versus outer faith. The Bible in Ephesians 3, verse 20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Well, sometimes we, according to the power that works in us, Oh, Holy Ghost. You know, in, 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 a, in, a, you're in, the, in the electricity world, you have 110 voltage, you have 220 voltage. You have, I think, three phase bigger than that. They, they, there's a certain capacity, a certain level of power that works in us. God has unlimited power. El Shaddai, oh, mighty God. Oh, God, Elohim. The creator of heaven and earth has unlimited power, but he's limited uh, to the power, your power capacity. What is your power capacity today? What is the capacity for God to move in and through you? What, what is, oh my God. This is where that inner holiness versus outer holiness. I heard about that God said about a man that the man lived like Christ. So God was, was, was going to do miracles like Christ. Mm. Oh, Father, help me to live like Yeshua, King Jesus. So you can do like Yeshua, King Jesus. Oh, you know, the difference between us and Jesus is huge. I don't think I've arrived. Hallelujah. But we praise God. Hallelujah. Ephesians 3.16 says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, the riches of his glory, the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That is the price of sin. The sin costs you the glory of God, the riches of God. The riches of God are in the glory of God that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Hallelujah. This is a level of God manifesting himself in a man. This is where you see you have an Elijah. You have a Moses. You know, Elijah is living, a woman perceived that this is a man of God, made a house for the man of God. Eli and then she started to say, what, what do I, uh, how do I, uh, mm, praise God. She, she started to, Elijah had was benefiting from the place that she provided for him. And he started to think, what can I do for this lady? Now, he analyzed her the, 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 from head to toe. She didn't have a child. And her husband was old. But Elijah's mind was not functioning in the natural. His, Elijah's mind was functioning in the glory, hallelujah. He was first, he wasn't, he was, first before I, oh dear God, you know, it looked like Elijah was poor, but he was really rich. Because he had access to the, he had access to the stuff that money could not buy. Oh, hallelujah. I believe he was strengthened with, by the spirit with might in his inner man. Elijah looked at the situation. The situation was 
she was old. Uh, no, her husband was old, and she had no child. Mm, God. And he was, Elijah was granted to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Oh, hallelujah, what a gift, what a gift, what a gift, what a gift. Oh, Father God, may you strengthen me with might by your spirit in my inner man. You know, uh, the Bible says that God lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Every man has a piece of God. But that, if, the, if that amount of God it gets an opportunity to develop and to flourish, but it's not going to flourish without Yeshua, King Jesus, God the Son. Yeshua, God, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 9, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God, Daddy God, raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Oh, dear God, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Romans 12, 1. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, by the present that you present your body, your body is a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. What does that mean? You're alive. You're alive. But you know you got one wife. You shouldn't be walking around lusting. Because Jesus said that's a sin. Mm, the Bible says in Second Peter 1. Whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises. That we might be partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Dear God. You're not going to ascend. You're not going to rise with God. You're not going to be who you are. Unless you can learn to live sexually holy. It's not going to happen. You know, different dispensations, different times. Solomon's time, you could, Solomon had a thousand wives and had God coming to him in a dream. David's time, God said, if you wanted more wives, I would have given them to you. But in my time, it's one. New Testament said that the elder bishop to have one wife. Husband of one wife. This is a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is my reasonable service. And let me tell you, when I, there's nobody, milk, you never know, but who's going to fight for milk? In, in, in a few minutes, the milk spoils. The milk goes bad. This world is like milk. It's, it, 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 but it looks like a long time. But we're really alive a very short time. Looks like a long time, but, and I'll tell you, you'll never get anywhere with God unless you can start to think in terms of billions of years. You got to think in terms of billions of years. You, you, you've got to get that down. Because if you think that this little short time is a long time, then you'll do stupid stuff. I mean, why does a man kill for money? Well, that don't make any sense. But because he thinks it's a long time, he does stupid stuff. And all I'm trying to say to everybody is, the Lord's time, oh dear God, that's that's the length, the real length of time. That's the real time, praise God. So he says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. See, we're all going to live forever. You're going to live forever in hell or live forever in paradise. I want to get to paradise. Hallelujah, praise God. There's no pain, no suffering. No crying, oh dear God, I, I'm a man, I do not like pain. And the Bible says in paradise there's no pain, no sadness, no sorrow, no suffering. Hallelujah and praise God. He says, I beseech you, brethren, present your bodies a living sacrifice. You know, in the Old Testament, when, when a sacrifice was pleasing to God, Yahweh, he would send down fire. He would send down the Holy Ghost fire and burn it up. And now when a man is pleasing to God, he would send down the fire of God. 
the, 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 the presence of God. God would step down from heaven and step in a man's body. Hallelujah and praise God. You know, there's a lot of lottery players. You're playing lottery, you're trying to strike it rich. Oh, hallelujah. But I'm trying to strike it rich, but, it, but with no expiration date. Now, by the way, when you're playing the lottery, you are betting on the devil. You're giving offerings to the devil. You make God angry. Put yourself on the list to be killed. Isaiah 65, 11, verse 12. I'm not teaching on the lottery, but I've got to point that out. You're, you're putting yourself on God's hit list. Yes, he's a God. He, he kills. God kills people. God make life, God take life. He's gone. He is shall not. The mighty gone. And I'm trying to teach you to be holy, sanctified. Uh, a place that God can dwell in and expand. Oh God, when God can dwell in you and expand, expand his godness, expand himself. When he can increase the power of are you a 110 volt Christian or 220 volt Christian? The word says now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. God got stuff that he can do like, that is way far above what you can, your little mind, your little mind, my little mind can think of. Oh, hallelujah. Just please him. Just please him. Please him. He said of Jesus, Yeshua, God, the son, the son of God. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. The, the famous of oh God, but God told Moses to tell Aaron to speak this on the people, on the people. He said, the Lord bless and keep thee. Make his face to shine upon thee. Be gracious to thee. Lift the light of his countenance upon thee. Oh, give, Lord, give you peace. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee. Now I'm telling you this. At BibleBillboard.org, there's a billboard Bible. You want God's face to shine on you? Let that Bible talk. Let that, let, put up that billboard Bible. Get involved in it. Get involved in it. I've seen the Lord Jesus smiling, smiling so wide. In the billboard Bible, hallelujah, praise God. You want God to smile on you, get involved in that. The putting up a billboards, reading the Bible in every language of the world, hallelujah, and praise God. Romans 12, 2, and be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Earlier I talked about inner faith versus out of faith. A child is born and most children are very trusty. They're born with faith. You know, praise God, if, if you ever give a baby to a man of God, a man of faith, and they were born and taught faith. You know, people get mad at, at Joe Lostein because he got the biggest uh, stadium. He got the, a stadium preaching the gospel in. But you don't understand. Joel Osteen's parents were pastors. They were taught faith like people teach their kids basketball. Or, or, or They were taught faith. They grew up in faith. They saw faith. Uh, hallelujah. You see, it says that be not conformed to this world. Uh, as a child, I, I was taught not to trust people. You, 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 you are taught that this is solid, that you got to be careful, you get hurt. But you got to transform by the renewing of your mind. Jesus came up, came saying, speak to the mountain. Curse on the fig tree. Jesus came showing that we have dominion over this world. He came with a whole different attitude, a whole different mindset. Trans, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is why it's so important for you to meditate in the word of the Lord day and night. The Bible says, blessed is the man that meditates in the word of the Lord day and night. And then it goes on further. He said, whatever he do shall prosper. The man that meditates in the word day and night, whatever he does shall prosper. Oh, hallelujah. You know, there was a, a, a man named King Midas. He touched, anything he touched, it turned to gold. Whatever he touched, King Midas, it turned to gold. 
Praise God. But then when it touched his steak, eat his fruit, it turned to gold too, and that wasn't good. Oh, dear God. But the point is, meditate the word of the Lord, then whatever you do shall prosper. I like that word prosper. It's going to be what you want. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Prosper. Whatever you do, if you're King Midas, you're going to touch it. It's like you're a King Midas now. But whatever you do, it's going to prosper. It's going to be a blessing to you. Midas touching his food, the gold was a curse to him. You want to eat? Amen and praise God. Renew your mind. Meditate in the word. Meditate in the word. Oh, God's word is true. I remember I was praying in Chicago, got off the ground. I heard the Lord speak. I heard a voice speak. It said, the Bible is fruit from the tree of life. The Bible is fruit from the tree of life. The, the word of God, they took the metal detectors, they took the Bible out the schools and put the metal detectors in. They took the Bible out the school and put the metal detectors in. Hallelujah. Dear God. So we, here we have the scripture saying, notice there's a lot of maybes. According to the power that works in us. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask for things, according to the power that worketh in us. There's higher levels. You're a 110 volt Christian, a 220, three phase. Depends on how much God can work through you. You know, God is God. And he chooses to work his work to whom he chooses to work through. Now, you got to understand, in this world, the devil will work through people too now. Mm. You know, the devil can heal because he's the one who put the sickness on you in the first place. Let me say that again. The devil can heal because he's the one who put the sickness in the first place. You have people going to witch doctors to get healed. Well, he, the devil's the one who put the sickness on you. He can take it off. Oh, God. Oh, hallelujah. This inner man grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit. Oh, hallelujah. The living water of God. When that would become a river inside of you. When that would become a river. Oh, dear God. Flowing out your belly. Oh, dear God, when the living water of God would flow, mm, riches of his glory, present yourself. See, this is a conversation about inner holiness, inner faith, inner sanctification. A lot of people are right now doing things just to be seen. Sometimes church becomes a fashion show. You got people in on the way to church arguing like cats and dogs that get to church and they got on the church face. He says, for all the works they do for to be seen of men, are you acting like a Christian because you want men to say good things about you? Are you, as they like to say, are you front? Huh? God does not like that. Let me tell you, Yeshua King Jesus, God the Son, he hated hypocrites. Hypocrisy is one of the biggest blocks to the power of God today. We do things to be seen. We do, not to be seen, we're pursuing the honor of men rather than the honor of God. We want men to say good things about us rather than God to say good things about us. Now, get me wrong. Don't get this, don't get this wrong. The Bible says a good reputation, a good name is to be chosen above riches. Yes, it is. But how are you going to have a good name with men and the devil is smiling at you? Because he sees your insides. He knows what you're capable of. He knows your inner man. 
how men gonna like you, but, the, but and God hates you. God hates your ways, your dirty ways. In Matthew 23, 13, it says, but all their, Matthew 25, but all their works they do for it to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. They, they're just having a fashion show. Hypocrites, he called it. Matthew 23, 30, but woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. See, some people, oh God, I, I've heard this story so many, so many times. Somebody was living a sinful life and went to church. And when they ran into the past and saw what was going on, church made them so disgusted because the church was more sinful than the world was going on. You block, you know, when you're a fake preacher, you're blocking people from coming to God because they're coming to God expecting to see a man of God with the light of God. Uh, you know, I, I, see, religion is a social club organized to make money. A church is a hospital that imperfect people assemble seeking to be touched by the living God. The pastor should be a doctor. You know, one of the things I'll tell you about a good church, you know, ask to be prayed for. Ask them to put you on the prayer list. Did God answer the prayer? You can't fake that. And let me tell you, if you ask the Lord for a church, to show you a church, to show you something that you can, oh, hallelujah, praise God, that you can, uh, a place where you can go and worship. Mm. Hallelujah. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for he devours widows' houses and for pretense make long prayers. Therefore you shall receive the greater damnation. See, Jesus is talking about putting people in hell because they're hypocrites. Pretenders. Pretending to be Christian and not. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you come past sea and land to make one past light, and when he's made, he make you make him twofold more. The child of hell. Listen to this phrase. Jesus is calling people the child of hell. Then yourself, you're a church. Somebody came to your church, but then you, you're actually turning them into the devil's church. Your church is actually the devil's church because you're teaching the wrong thing, the wrong example. Dear God, the pastor having sex with the woman, taking the money and, and, and doing God knows what. I'm not. There is a place for the church to be supported. There is a place for a man of God, I'm talking about, you see now, you do have to understand, and think about this, think if you were the devil for a second, wouldn't you start a church? Hmm? If you were the devil, of course you would. So you've got to ask the Lord to show you the real church, where it's not a hypocrite that's in charge. Someone that's pretending to look good to make money. The Bible talks about not letting people make merchandise out of you. Yes, the lights are there in the real church. It's got to be supported, praise God. And God will bless you when you're tired. But come on, people. Ask the Lord to show you. To show you a real church and a real pastor. He's going to answer that prayer. And I'll tell you, there is something I like to call economic violence. Dr. King boycotted when they were walking and they sick dogs on the children. But when Dr. King boycotted that bus and would not, they didn't pay to get on the bus. They changed the rules on that bus. When you hit a man in his pocket, in his money, economic violence, now you go to a church and you instead of putting money in the envelope, if it's a if not, it, don't do this if it's a real church. But if it's a fake church, 
you say, listen, if you were teaching, if you were a real man of God, I would have put some money in there. Economic violence. So you can talk to your blue in the face. But until you learn to hit a man in his wallet, to hit the enemy in his wallet, you know, I have an idea for a, a, a website. You know, you've got the Fortune 500. Sometimes we are buying the bullets that shoot us. We work hard and we take our money and we go and we spend it with a company. Oh, dear God. And the owner of that company hates you, has policies against you. The owner of that company is against you and you're spending money with them. Before you spend money, for example, you have a company, a Fortune 500 company, and 99%, sometimes 100% of the workers are all one race. That's not right. And yet you're putting your money into that. You need to analyze who it is you're spending money with. This is a strategy. You know, it's interesting, I was listening to one of Dr. King's speeches, and he was talking about boycotting companies the night before he died. The night before they shot him and killed him, he was talking about buying, boycotting companies. He was talking about economic violence. Yes, we preach nonviolence. Jesus is about love. That's one thing I love about the Bible. The Bible is about love, about turning the other cheek. Somebody hit you. You know, the, I, I got a little rapper say, evil for evil, make you feeble. Good for evil makes you strong. Strong and can come. Good for evil. A man of God returns good for evil. When somebody hits you and you hit them back, revenge, I don't understand revenge. Still, I haven't been put in a situation where I need to understand revenge. What do we get out of revenge? God is the ultimate revenger. I leave all vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Yes, as I grow, when I was younger, I did, but as I grow older in God, there is a transformation of love. God is love. You know, a, a man of God will think how to do things for others, think how to love his family, love his friends. We'll plan surprises. There is a goodness that comes out the heart of a man of God. See, you live, the power of God is limited in you because you're not a good person. You're a hypocrite. You, you, you like to pretend to serve God, but you're not. Jesus said, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These arts ye have done, and not to leave the other undone. You know, when you, yes, tithing works. When you give God money, it works. God will bless you. But he says here, when you, 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 you neglect in judgment, mercy, and faith. Now, when you give to God with a bad heart, with an evil heart, you're treating God like a prostitute. See, a prostitute, you give her money, but you, and you want sex. You want the benefit of a wife without the responsibility. When you give God money like King David was generous with God, Solomon was generous with God, and God made them rich. Abraham was generous with God, and God made them rich. When you, but then in the Bible, God talks about this. You're bringing sacrifices to me, and you're doing evil on the same day. Present you. God want you. He wants you to, to say no to sin. And sin is a trap. Jesus said, go, sin no more, lest a worse thing come on you. Demons enter your body because of sin. You get sick because of sin. You die early because of sin. Sin is a trap. Hypocrites. You're pretending to be something you're not. In Matthew 16, 3, it says, And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. Oh, ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky. 
but can ye not discern the signs of the times? You see, because it's interesting. You're pretending, to, you're presenting an image, facade, of one thing. So people will see you one way, but you're not. And then God is saying, because you're doing that, he, 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 see, he well, it didn't say it was a consequence here. He says, can you, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? So you don't have sight. Because you pretend it blocks your sight. And it doesn't say it's a consequence. But he says, can ye not discern the sign of the time? A wise man sees danger come and gets out the way. If you're driving, I remember one time I spent some money and I fixed a car up. $1,500. The same day I drove in a 20 foot, I don't know, a huge pothole. The airbag busted, damaged the car. I didn't see. If you can see death coming, I try to avoid it. You're going to try to avoid it. You know, sometimes I, mean, I see people rushing, rushing, take this place in the line. I said, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be early for death. I'm trying to be late for death. Late for trouble. Praise God as I get older. I'm trying to serve the Lord because God is creator of heaven and earth. This world is crazy. I read where there's a shot two people in Rosedale. Shot another man the same day. This world is crazy. I'm hanging on to God. Dear God for dear life. Because I know. In the Bible it says. The devil had to get permission from God in order to touch Job. When you serve God the proper way, the devil has to get permission from God to touch you. Oh, hallelujah, praise God. The Bible says, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. You're pretending to be a man of God, but you're really wicked. Matthew 20, 27. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. He talks about the cemetery where you beautiful grave, but below it is a dead man. Some people are dead man walking, dead man talking. Uh, do you see what I'm saying? Because if you're not in Christ today, you're a dead man. Yes, you're walking and talking. But if you're not, Jesus Christ is not your God and Savior, you're a dead man. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because he built the tombs of the prophets and garnished the sepulchres of the righteous. Now Jesus, the Bible says here in Matthew 24, 51, and shall appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. He says there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you ever bit your teeth or grind your teeth? He says there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And then he said put them with the hypocrites. Seeming to indicate in the lake of fire there is a special place for the hypocrites. Inner holiness versus outer holiness. Outer holiness. Inner faith versus outer faith. Dear God, help us to have both. Help us, O oh God. If you hear these words today and you think they apply to you, repent. Turn. The Bible, praise God. One of the things I love is it forgetting what is behind. We press on to the prize. The rest of your life is a blank page. You can fly to Africa tomorrow. You can go anywhere. Praise God. The rest of your life is a blank page. Why don't you trick the devil and come to God? Always remember Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is everywhere. The Lord sees everything. The Lord sees your heart. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 9, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, 
that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Notice the Bible says, guard the heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. What is the condition of your heart today? Oh, praise God. Ask God to give you a heart transplant. Ask God to take out the stony heart and give you a heart transplant. Somebody say, Father, forgive me of my sins. Confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Do you say quietly? Nobody has to see what you're doing. Save me from the dead. Praise God. I pray you join with me at BibleBillboard.org. We're aiming to put up billboards reading the Bible in every language of the world. Invite you to put your looking for problems and problem solvers at unityfix.com. Post your problems so we can pray about it. Solve them a prayer, solved by prayer. Wisdom, unity, or money. Unityfix.com. Praise God. The Bible says in Matthew 5 19. That whosoever breaks and teaches others to break even one of the commandments is the least. Whosoever shall do and teach them is the greatest. If you've heard me say anything against the word of God, please correct me. And you can email me or go to BibleBellboard.org and contact me and let me know what I taught wrong. Because we have to learn to listen. Listening is one of the greatest forms of receiving. I can receive just by listening. And so we're trying to aim and to teach the truth, the simple truth of the word of God. And if you ever hear anything that's not the truth, please let me know. I'd rather correct myself than be corrected. The fear of the Lord, the Bible says, humility and the fear of the Lord lead to riches, honor, and long life. Humility and the fear of the Lord lead to riches, honor, and long life. God bless you. Hope I see you in paradise.